In this video, we'll demonstrate how to generate construction limits from graphics created during the 3D modeling process. There may be multiple ways to generate construction limit lines using templates, uh, but this workflow is the process that seems to work best for ODOT projects. When working with your templates, you'll need to be sure that the feature name override is consistently used for all the outer tie-down points for both cut and fill conditions. So, uh, for example, the, all the outer tie points on the right side of this template use the feature override name of R-Tie. Regardless of which one I pick, you'll see that they're all R-Tie. And on the left side, they're all L-Tie. We'll also want to look at the feature definition that is assigned to each of these points and make sure that it is set to the proposed grade tie line feature. Both the feature name override and the feature def definition are typically already defined in the standard ODOT template library end conditions, but if you want to modify these for your project or you've created your own end conditions, you want to ensure that these settings are correct. Once you have your templates created and your corridor processed, uh, a continuous element is drawn in 2D model at the outer tie down locations. So I already have all this processed here and my Uh, my outer tie limit is shown here. You'll see L tie belongs to the center line of State Route 185 uh, alignment. So I'm in my corridor design file or my KM file just to show that the lines are drawn here. The construction limits are normally drawn in the right away design file or the BR file containing the proposed right away information. So you want to attach the KM file to the BR file when when you do this. So I'm going to open um, I'll open my BR file and I will go and attach my KM file, which is already attached here and it's turned on. You may need to toggle some levels on or off to make it appear correctly for you. And again, if I hover over the green tie line, I will see that it is the L tie complex type. Okay, so from here, first thing I want to do is make sure I'm in my open roads modeling workflow and on the geometry tab I want me to browse over to the horizontal group. Uh, under the offsets and tapers, pull down menu, I'm going to select single offset entire element. And the first thing we want to do here is make sure that we have the proper feature definition set. So under linear, I uh, will browse down to right away and select my proposed construction limit. Note that a name is uh, already populated in there. Uh, you can change that here if you need to. Then I'm going to go over to the element that I want to offset to make my construction limit, so to my tie line. And when I select that element, it's going to let me place this in at whatever offset I want. So in this case, I just want this to be two feet from that line. Now, on my heads up prompt, I entered two, and now I'm going to uh, data point to accept that. And on prompt is now asking me, do I want to mirror it? And I do not, so I'm going to accept the no. Now, this element is ruled to the tie point, so if my uh, corridor changed or my profile changed and my tie points were adjusted, uh, the construction limit would also be adjusted to reflect that change. Um, in the same fashion, if we were wanting to look at the properties here, and let's say I wanted to um, change the offset to 5 feet, I can do that here, and now my line moves. Um, but most of the time, we do not want this to be ruled because we need to make some sort of edit to this. Say we maybe we want to remove this vertice here to feather out the construction limit, or um, we have a utility or a driveway to work around. So what I want to do in this case is with the element select, I will hover over this and I'm going to go to the rules menu and I'm going to remove the rule. So now this is no longer ruled to our tie line and if that tie line were to change, we would not see that change reflected on my construction limit. Uh, 
So if I look at the properties here, you'll no longer see the information we had previously with the offset distance. Uh, one other thing to note is if you'll see the, the handlebars or the grips here, those are uh, a vertice placed at every point where you had a template drop in your corridor model. Uh, and then those are also affected by the design stage in which your corridor is, is being used. So if you had a conceptual um, model, you would have less points here. And if you had a final design stage, uh, you would have more points here. In this case, I was just set to uh, design, so uh, it looks like they're every 10 feet or so. So now, if I want to modify this, I can go to my drawing tools, and I can just use... Um, because this is a simple microstation element now, I can just use regular microstation modify and edit commands to do this. Um, so I can modify these vertices um, to move it, say, around whatever I needed to move it to. And if I wanted to, say, maybe delete some vertices, I can use the delete vertex command and take some of those out, maybe make my construction limits look uh, a little more smooth.